When it comes to finance-related fun facts, you'll sometimes run across the claim that famed movie director Steven Spielberg has the largest life insurance policy of any American. Life insurance policies are sometimes used by wealthy people. This could be for income replacement or for estate and legacy planning purposes. And Spielberg's many successful Hollywood productions, including Close Encounters of the Third Kind, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, the whole Indiana Jones franchise, Jurassic Park, and many others certainly qualify him as a wealthy individual. Even so, is a $1.2 billion policy even possible? Is the claim believable? Let's take a look. First of all, is $1.2 billion even a plausible number? And the answer is, it is and it isn't. It's sometimes stated that a person's term insurance coverage could be as much as 25 times their annual income. And Spielberg's salary, some eight years ago, was reported to have been $150 million a year. Doing that simple math, we get $3.75 billion. Additionally, Spielberg's net worth is supposed to be in the same vicinity. So the $1.2 billion figure does seem plausible from the perspective of Spielberg's income earning potential. I'll consider an actuarial point of view in a moment. But the main problem with the claim that Spielberg does have a $1.2 billion policy is that there isn't much evidence to support it. If you Google things like Steven Spielberg, $1.2 billion life insurance policy, you just find a bunch of these trivia or weird fact related posts. They have one or maybe two sentence mentions and no citations whatsoever. Many of these appear to have been compiled by local insurance agencies, presumably for advertising purposes. But these references themselves aren't worth much in terms of evidence, no matter how often the claims are repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated. The most interesting reference came by way of this article. It raised the possibility that the $1.2 billion policy wasn't private insurance, but was instead a form of business insurance purchased on Spielberg by the film studio DreamWorks, which Spielberg helped to found. These kinds of policies, called key person insurance, are not out of the ordinary in the corporate world. But according to a 2004 Securities and Exchange Commission filing by DreamWorks, the company does not, or at least did not, maintain any such policy on any employee, executive, or officer. DreamWorks has consistently maintained this position, including in documents filed from 2005 all the way up to 2015, which was the last I was able to find, and these are available through a search on sec.gov. Searching more broadly for Spielberg and any reference to $1.2 billion turns up a number of articles talking about the box office success of the 1975 movie Jaws, as well as of a huge financing agreement between DreamWorks and an outfit called Reliance ADA, but nothing about life insurance. Though I did learn that Spielberg apparently rents out his mega yacht for $1.2 million a month if you'd like to book it for your next vacation getaway. By the way, I did try to contact Spielberg via his Amblin Entertainment Company, but I'm not holding my breath for a reply. In a recent article about a $200 million life insurance policy, CNN informs us that 19 different insurance companies were involved in the underwriting and issuing process. And this information gives us a further reason to doubt the existence of any $1.2 billion contract. We can use simple ratios to make a guess about how many companies would have to be involved in issuing a policy worth over a billion dollars. Admittedly though, this method is clumsy, imprecise and falsely assumes that every company shares equally in the risk. But carrying out the cross multiplication and division just for illustration purposes, we see that 113 companies would have to be implicated if the liability were evenly distributed. Even if every company assumed $20 million of risk, it would still take 60 companies to underwrite a $1.2 billion policy. Current statistics suggest that there are enough companies to shoulder such a burden in principle, but in practice, it's questionable whether the required insurance treaties could be agreed upon. Each insurance company has its own rules regarding the biggest policy it is willing to issue by itself. This is called its retention limit. Beyond this amount, any policy the company writes will have to involve third parties called reinsurers to help shoulder the load. These limits are known to the company's actuaries and underwriters, but I was able to dig up some numbers for Prudential, which Bankrate.com ranks as the second biggest life insurance carrier. The biggest policy Prudential is willing to write on its own is $20 million. Its jumbo limit, or the maximum contract that could be cobbled together from all Prudential's reinsurance treaties, is $65 million. 
And Prudential estimates that the absolute largest policy it could possibly write on a, quote, facultative or one-off basis is $135 million. Now, MetLife is the number one life insurance company in terms of premium dollars collected. When I wrote to Met, a public relations correspondent told me that the company's largest policy to date was $40 million. But Met is nearly twice as big as Prudential. As a thought experiment, then, if we double each of Prudential's limits, we still only arrive at a theoretical maximum value of $270 million. If we compare these hypotheticals with what we have already learned, we see that both MetLife's $40 million policy, as well as the current world record holding policy, according to Guinness Book, are within the range between retention and capacity limits. If Steven Spielberg, or anyone else, had been approved for a $1.2 billion life insurance policy, such a contract, standing at nearly six times larger than the world record, would literally have to be between four and nine times bigger even than the capacity limits for some of the biggest insurance companies, at least those that are based in the United States. Based on the information at hand, I doubt that Spielberg does have a $1.2 billion policy. Obviously, I don't have inside information here, though I'll try to remember to ask Spielberg about it the next time he and I sit down for lunch. But seriously, I hope that something I said was of interest to you. And if you enjoyed the presentation, please like it. If you'd like to see other content, then I invite you to subscribe to the channel. For example, I have another video where I try and answer the question of what then is the largest insurance policy in the United States. So stay tuned for that. And of course, if you click the notification bell, you'll be alerted to that content as it becomes available. I thank you so much for being with me today, and I look forward to seeing you again in another video. Thank you very much.